horn sounds for a new arrival, who would it be? You don't know what you are. Item? Things have not gone as planned. Item! Perhaps you can aid me in locating Hytham. What is your purpose with him? I have brought a sampling of goods from Ireland. That is, if I can bring my ships to dock. Azar! I see you've met Eivor Wolfkist. Ah, so you are Eivor. In fact... I bring you a message from Ireland. I know no one in Ireland. The letter is from Dublin's king. Sadly, I seem to have misplaced it. The king of Dublin? Why would such a one write to me? He wishes to expand trade to England. The purpose of my bringing goods here. Azar is from the east, but lives in Ireland now. But in matters of trade, Azar, your king should petition Randvi. He claims to know Eivor. He asked me to accompany you on the trip there. I know no king, and I'm certainly not about to journey to Ireland. But first, Azar, you must build a trading post. In fact, where is your trade ship? Ah, oh, yes. An unfortunate incident, most concerning. Trading rivals have blocked the river, and thus my goods. A blocked river hurts all Ravensthorpe. Stay. I'll put things right. As you see, Eivor is a person of action. Find me later, when the river is safely clear. Of course, my friend. I thank you, Eivor. I will find the king's letter in the meantime. You keep insisting that I know an Irish king. It is a fantasy. What manner of king is it that sends me letters from Ireland? Let's get out of here. No racing the sail here. Let's have a song. More Let's sail! Go. We need an epic tail. Unor the Ugly was an excellent sailor who could pilot a longship entirely on his own. This is why King Sigvaldi kept him around. In all other matters, Unor was a cruel, anxious, and humorless man. He was one of the most unlikable people I have ever known. One year, I recall we had invited some carls from the Ingling clan to dine with us. As we were serving ale, we came to find that we had none left. It so happened that the ale had run out just before reaching Unar's horn. This raised in him a word storm, and he accused Sigvaldi of treachery. Every man in the longhouse jeered at Unar for raising such a fuss. This made Unar angrier than before, and he stormed out. A short time later, we heard him yelling through the door of the hall. 
I set this scorn pole upon the men of Ingling for their dishonor. We looked outside and saw that Unar had severed one of the heads of the Ingling's horses and stuck it upon a hazel branch. When he saw us gathering at the door, the Ingling carls among us, Unar panicked and ran. He was not seen for many months. <laughs> Let's hear a story. Listen well, so I may tell you a tale of the Berserkers, and why we keep our potent brew a secret. Once there was a Berserker named Nori Nightcross, who became a wealthy Jarl, known for his fair and generous home. Every day, dozens of thanes, merchants, cousins, and other hangers-on ate at his table, drank his meal, and took his gifts. Finally, Nori Yarl ran. Please, he ordered his cooks to prepare a secret brew for a magnificent feast. He then invited every freeloader in his yard up to his meal, promising his greatest gift yet to be given after the feast. As his guests ate and drank their fill, Nori and his loyal cars slipped away. One by one, the guests entered the circle. Get out of here! Hey, boy! What does your thing? Ah! 
tight spot. Use your glimmer. Skulls got a story. During my 19th winter, King Styrbjorn ordered the construction of a new longhouse. The splendid hall you now see at Thornburg. To build this longhouse, he employed the help of 20 men. I was among them, as was Fradi, the strongest and stoutest man I had ever seen. We set about felling trees and hewing wood for timber. Fradi was the fastest of us, dropping 41 trees in only two days. On the third day, a spindly man called Nar was near upon felling his first tree. He had hacked it all the way around like some mad animal. When the tree fell, it did so in a direction he had not wished. Straight down upon Fradi. Nar called out, but it was too late. Fradi had only enough time to turn and face the doom bearing down upon him. With that, he raised his arms to embrace the timber hammer. The force of the trees falling drove Fradi deep into the snowbank, yet his arms never let go. He held that angry trunk as a lover. Like hounds, we scooped at the snow to reach him. We found Fradi ten feet down, alive but in pain, still bearing the tree upon his shoulder. We'll share a tale. You want a story, but I will give you a confession. And if you think me weaker for it, that tells more about you than me. Here is my secret. I love love. I love being in love. I love the ache of love. The turmoil of love. My parents taught me that. To love love. My mother once said, better to feel the stings and arrows of love than nothing at all. Be a bolt of lightning, not a stone. So many men forget to hug. My father would go by every hut in our village every night with mead and hugs. I would do the same. He always said, beyond the complex lives of gods are these simple truths. We forget, and it takes tragedy to get them Bring back. Sail in. He said this too. Hugs are hugs. Mead is mead. Love is love. Gods, I miss him. I see him sometimes, his face leaping from the waves. Make for the dark!
Azar, the river is clear, save for a few bodies and sticks. Your goods will get through. Your reputation comes honestly then, though I am not sure about the name Wolfkist. The scar on my neck. Ah. My Viking name would then be Azar One Eye. Thank you, Azar One Eye. My men will help construct your trade post. Then I am twice debted to you. If ever you change your mind about Ireland, I will be found in the trade post, once built. Oh, and I found your letter. Here. My cousin Barith is alive, and king of Dublin. The Nornir never failed to delight. My eyes soon. Aver. Are you prepared to go to Ireland? Azar, you did not tell me the king was my cousin. It was most amusing this way, was it not? A little mystery. I prefer to know what is what. But it was a pleasant surprise. He's eager to see you. Shall we set sail? Yeah, I would like to see this land. And my cousin Barith. Ireland, a patchwork of petty kings jostling for hills and pastures and green, green glens. My adopted isle. Azar, how is it that Barith, as knows as ice, is king of Dublin? Dublin is a Viking city, Eivor. But in fact, merchants and beggars come from all parts to parade in its muddy streets. Oh, to think of Barith as king of a city. It perhaps sounds grander than it is. Ireland has many, many kings. They litter the countryside, and Barith's throne is not secure. Flan Shinna calls the tune. Who is he? Soon to be crowned High King of all Ireland. Flan distrusts Vikings, though he needs them. Barret will find a way. As a boy, he wasn't much of a fighter, but somehow always came out all right. I'm sure what you say is true. Certainly, he is loved by his people.
Your crew can find lodging here. Come, let us find Bareth. Eivor! Blood of my blood! Look at you! You have on Thrusta's cheekbones! <laughs> and you! The seven-year-old lives in you still. It has been a long stretch since we pelted old Ganfrid with apple cores. <laughs> he never forgave us that. And Sigurd in the clan? How goes with all? There is much to tell you, Barith. But let me breathe your Irish air. Thank you for keeping my ports from being set ablaze in my absence. My ports? Yes, old man. I can rule my city even without you here. Eivor, you arrive in good time. I'm hosting a feast in honor of my son, Sifrith. He is 17 today. A 17-year-old son? And rather a difficult boy at that. Come, there's much to show on the way to my castle. A kingship, a son, and a castle. Truly, you have a fine life, Bahar. Castle? It is a wooden house. Finely crafted, to be sure, but in Shiraz, it would be home to a middling rug merchant. Lead me to your rock merchant's wooden hovel, Barith. <laughs> Just look at her dogs! Wee babe of a city, but the biggest port in all Ireland. You cannot appreciate Irish air without enduring the stench of our dogs. It is upon the strength of this port I plan to secure my kingship. Azar told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading is all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I'd trust my commerce to, old man. You let them call you that. I call him worse things. I still owe you a horn of ale. This is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. My mighty king. Aoife, this is my cousin, Eivor. Show her the bow I had you make for her. This is for me. The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? I just want to get a feel for how the bow handles. That's sure. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go! It is a very nice bow. Thank you, Barret. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, cousin. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beaten. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. The Tsar told me that it is a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home, 
My only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. Up, Barret! For dear! Here we are. Please, go enjoy yourself. I must have a word with my son. Come meet him before the night's out. Hussar, I was not sure if I would see you here. Why is that? I thought you'd rather take stock of your wares than placidly observe caterwauling Vikings. And you... You would rather spend time with this gossiping Ganti. I know few people here, and of them, I know you are the one who is always ready with a sweet anecdote. I do have some information you may find interesting. Siegfried's stomach doesn't agree with cheese. Had an accident about it last week. The embarrassing, bed-changing kind. He shat himself. Mortifying for a lad of that age. The kind of thing that would devastate him in front of his comrades. If one needed ammunition. Thank you, Asar. Your company is always enlightening. What do you expect, Father? That I follow your example? The example of a pack mule? Hey! Hi. Enjoying yourself? It's great, crack. It's a fine thing to celebrate future King Siegfried. Can I ask? What is your life like in this city? Well, there's a fair among the work, isn't there? Hauling crates, shoveling muck. I'm a tanner myself. Long days stripping hides and dousing them in cow piss. You can probably smell the stench. I can. I'm curious. How do you feel Barith has done as king? Oh, he's done a lovely job he has. Likes to throw feasts. Invites us common folk. More host than king, perhaps, but he's a fine man, and the city has never been busier. Enjoy the feast, friend. You as well. Sigfrith! I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the arse. Enough! Eivor, my son, Siegfried. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? A lot of shit coming from that mouth. Word is, you have trouble controlling it out the other end, too. Yes, I owe you thanks for not beating me, bloody. I am not here to quarrel with you, Sigfrid. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? A visit to Norway might do a young vikinger like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. You're unhappy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. But he chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. I have lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. 
Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bareth can commune with the dead. <laughs> no, his conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Sigfrith. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime. to get on the other side.
Must be black from the other side.
This place is heavily guarded. Be my eyes soon. Never a moment's peace.
Survey the area, Sunan. I need your eyes, my friend. See you, old friend. Mmm, I feel great. So uneasy. <sighs> A king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew it. Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, 
Screaming like a warrior? The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I've fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. In dead of night. Stars in the sky. Moonlight on snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This. A caution from the gods about my vanity. Come. If we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? My imagination run amok, but let us away. Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. By Thor's hammer, Barret. I could sleep a week. Not as spry as the old days, eh? When we'd search the night in hopes of catching a will o' the wisp. <laughs> Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I am not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. I, tis worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain. Keep a sharp watch. Brigands rove the streets tonight. You can be sure of me, my king. Always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Barret. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into this sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept Silver to lie low. For a week or two. But then he'll be back, and back again. I can remove this blot, once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your gods' sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor... I have never been so happy. Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfried may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. 
Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flom on Rise of Sun. Sigfrith would be at the marketplace. I need to learn more about Thorsty. I'll never learn. Morning, Siegfried. Eivor. It was a rough night. I drank too much and I am desperate to calm my belly. I cannot help your belly. But could you tell me what you know of this man, Thorstein? Ah. Ta told you I tried to join his gang, eh? Thorstein is a real vikinger. Like you, but louder. You weren't allowed to join. Too young and gangly. Amar wouldn't even show me where his hideout is. Tell me a bit about this Amar. Likes a rail the way kittens like milk. Spends her time getting tiddly on the docks, chatting up passersby. I will speak to her. Perhaps Thorstein will regret not letting you in his gang. Listen to me. If you're smart, you won't cross Amar. She's a vicious fighter. Sunan, guide me. Enjoying her ale. Likely to be a moth. What are you drinking, friend? The finest ale in town. I like fine things, so you have my attention. What are you doing here, darling? Looking for a good drink and good company. You've stumbled into the right ale house. Excellent ale and better conversation. The ale leads to chatting, leads to... Well, who knows? Ooh, let's find out. Is that all you can do? Ooh, you 
are wicked. You are a compelling woman. What is it you do? You may have heard of Thorstein. I'm one of his most trusted friends. I have heard of him. Very impressive that he trusts you. He's like a brother to me. A not very bright brother. He entrusted me with a key to his secret lair. He has a lair? I would very much like to see that. Over in Dupke Landing? Sorry. Thorstein would get all pouty. But perhaps you'd like to join me for a meal? I'd rather join you for something else. <laughs> Can't wait to find out what that is. But hold that thought. I don't feel well. I best move about a bit. Need to cloak myself here. I need to get that key from her. If I'm careful, I can avoid a fight. Trusting fool. Your key is mine. Now to find Thorstein's hideout. Yes, go to me, Bright. No, let's go. Have a look, Sunan. spoke of.
in here you made a mistake when you came for Baris Makiva oh gods you plan to kill me give my head to whatever Irish master you and Boris serve I serve no Irish master Borscat if you had any Norse loyalty you'd be like me running the filthy god eaters from the island the King of Dublin should look out for Vikings, not try to make nice with those cunts who killed our forebears. <laughs> Join me. I could use someone with real balls, and the silver is good. Be silent, and I might show you mercy. <laughs> not to draw attention here. Common refuse delivered to your judgment, King Baris. Thorstein, author of the plot to waylay me and my cousin. Well, you know how it is, Baris. A fellow needs some silver. A king could fetch Dublin's treasury in ransom. Although I'm not certain you'd bring in quite so much. Say so, Baris, and I will cut out his insolent tongue. On your feet, Thorstein. You bloody <sighs> my floors. <sighs> It is a weighty decision. I would have my closest friend advise me. Eivor? How shall I deal with this ruffian? All must see that you are a just, resolute king. A stately and dignified execution is called for. Well said, Eivor. I want no blood feud lasting generations, Thorstein. You are not worth the bother. Dublin confiscates your land and silver. I banish you forevermore. Be gone by sundown. Bend the knee and show your thanks. Best to you, King. I've better places to be than Dublin. Father! Why choose weakness? Give every enemy a length of rope. Soon they will carry your noose. Peace. Flanchina will soon rule all Ireland. Flanchina has the power to make or undo my kingship and that of my son. He is the center of all. But Flan distrusts me. He does not believe I'm truly Christian. By showing Christian mercy, I begin to change his mind. 
You are more shrewd than I took you for, cousin. Maybe Thorstein's release is worth a kingdom, but will mercy be enough? That is why I must build trade. Flan will see that the strength of Dublin's ports is the strength of Ireland. Show him the power of that trade, cousin. Obtain some rare item from afar, some spice or gem or weapon. And gift it to him at the coronation. It will represent Dublin's reach and help secure my crown. Flan will hear of your Christian mercy. Meantime, I will speak to Asara about a gift. Meet me before the coronation. We will go together. Ghostmates in Vantadi leaving. I saw no good stuff, Ray. Eivor, welcome to my shop. I came to ask a favor. It is pleasant to strengthen friendships. What do you seek? Barith wishes to show Flan the value of Dublin's trade. Could we obtain a gift from a distant land? This is the very problem vexing me. You see, I have acquired land in Rathdown, previously owned by Thorstein, in fact. But the land has gone to Thorn and Dog, smugglers as well. Once cleared, its trading route will serve our heart's desire. In this case, my heart desires an exotic gift, which would be... A spice merchant I know covets pelts of fine fur. Rathdown has an abundance. It is a perfect match. Spies is a gift fit for a king. Thank you, Asar. It is north of here. You go clear it of smugglers while I sit on my ass. No need for thanks. Rathdown is north of Dublin. I should journey there.
must be careful now. Smugglers. The Zara needs them cleared away. <laughs> I'm tell you from ah! Hang on! Oh, blood bag! You're one of Azar's men. I am. Azar tells me you two are interested in furs to trade for a gift. Il Shoking flaunt the reach of Barith's trade. We'll get the furs you need. How can I help? With trade post supplies. We'll build up the post for better and faster trade. Where would I get these supplies? Monasteries are a good place. They'll have what you need. Ireland must have many trading posts. It does. Each post trades specific goods. Here, we gather fours. But elsewhere, all manner of things. I'm curious how you and Azar work together. I gather pelts, treat them, and send the fur to Dublin. Azar trades them across the seas. We want to build up the post, both to send bundles of furs to Azar more often, and to store more to send. Thank you, friend. Goodbye, Eivor. Catch! Take 
take Christ's gold and burn down his house! Over here! Vörmöð, brjóta eitthvað. Run up the sail! Strike of the tune. If you We need an epic tale. In the early days of the feud between Kiotve the Cruel and the Raven Clan, there was a mad berserker called Kiar Robo. Kiar had pledged his battle fury to no king or yarl, and would give his oath only once each winter, for reasons nobody could fathom. One year, Kiar's sister, Fulra, was married to Kyotve's brother, Alrek, and soon Kiar was often seen in the company of that clan. But soon after, word came to Kiar that Alrek had abused his sister. 
When he asked Thora about this, she told him, It is true. So Kiara invited Alrek on a hunting expedition. When they were away, Kiara slew Alrek and pulled off one of his arms. When he returned to camp, Kyotve asked where his brother was. Kiara shook his hand and held out his hand. Are you feeling which was all right? Your brother bid me give you this ring, Kyotve. Confused, Kyotve took the ring, and with it came the entire bloody arm. Your brother pledged his oath to hell herself, Kiara laughed. Then he turned and departed. He was never seen in those parts again. Dock the ship here! We'll pick up from there. I see by your smile that the expedition was fruitful. Should we build something? I feel like it's very cool. Well done. We'll send the force to Dublin. Azar will help you find more posts to capture. Goodbye, friend.
Eivor, the furs have arrived from Rastan. We can now trade for Flan's gift. Come, check the storage. Azar, you have your trade post. In fact, I have heard from the trader himself. We have furs enough for Flan's gift. Here, my friend, make the trade. Fine spices that cannot be obtained anywhere else. I will see them delivered for the coronation. Flan will certainly grasp the strength of Dublin's trade. Speaking of, Eivor, there are abandoned trade posts across Ireland. You're suggesting I claim them to increase Dublin's reach? We will gain access to goods we could not otherwise obtain. There is great bounty to be had. I will look for opportunities. Meanwhile, I'll find Barrett. You'll be pleased to hear Flan's gift. Barith, Flan's gift is on its way to Meath. Very good. I, I was just preparing to leave for the coronation, though I now have a problem on my hands. What is it? Flan's poetess, Kira. She was here delivering a formal invitation, and now I do not know where she's gone. Do you think she's in trouble? No, I think she is amusing herself somewhere. Likely perusing Dublin's markets. We need her. The High Poetess is an important member of the King's Court. There cannot be a coronation without one. I will find her. Where should we meet? By Dublin's gates. I will ready the horses. Oh, 
hafa fullnað sem er vand. Áttu við ég sjást. Hvað er heldur svo? Er sér ekki best. Your yawping! For the sake of our ears, shut your mouth! Sure, and you're an idiot. You are all the same. Grab the bitch! Faye, won't you let a caged bird sing? Shit. I'd hoped an audience of tone-deaf Danes might permit. Ah, you Kira. Hold her down. Wonder of wonders. How much trouble can I be in at once? Can't help you. This one comes with me. No, no, no! She will answer for this insult! Can change your mind? <laughs> you owe me. has made friends with the ground. On your feet, Portes. Malian, everything is spinning. A cold bath will remedy this quickly.
to flush the ale from you. If you think I'm going to lock you to Tara, you're mistaken. Tara? Wait, who are you? Barret sent me to collect you. He's waiting at the stables. Ah, an envoy. Tell me, how much coin would an envoy be wanting to speak nothing of this brawl to Barret? He'll tie a guard to my hip the next time I'm in Dublin. A man can be so sensitive sometimes, do you know what I mean? I do. Barith is my family. <clears throat> well then, I think my mouth has gotten me in enough trouble today. Try opening it less. Works for me. Shall we? Barith has never spoken of you. What name do you bear? Eivor. I hail from Norway, now settled in England with the rest of my clan. A clan, eh? Are they all fist thumpers like you? It is because of these fists you live to sing another day, poetess. So true. Barith. I was beginning to worry. What took? There was... trouble. Ara, no need to be so tense. Shall we ride for Tara? We don't want to be late for the coronation. After you. I was surprised to meet a member of your family, Barith. Eivor tells me she's come from England. Yes, Eivor is helping to establish trade in Dublin, secure valuable resources with faraway lands. In time, Dublin will become the heart of Ireland's trade, one that each and every kingdom can benefit from. That will no doubt please the future High King. Yes, well, above trade, I am hoping Flan can see Dublin as a friend and ally. You and many others. A relationship with Barith would be one worth fostering. It would be foolish of your king to ignore it. It appears Eivor is not abreast with our kingly history, Barith. We were hoping to have a meeting with Flan. My wish is to strengthen our ties. Can you see it done? Perhaps. We will see how the evening goes. Quite the event, hmm? Spared no expense, that much is clear. Ara, my lady, one of the priests has gone missing. A violent mess is left of his tent. I fear something terrible has happened. Missing? Are you sure? Could be nothing. Could mean danger. Where is Flon? He's not yet arrived. That gives us some time. Kira, act as if nothing were amiss. Barth and I will look into it. Where is this tent? Up the hill, to the left. Be careful. There was a fight here. It is the eve of the coronation, and already trouble brews. Keep your wits and stay close. We do not know anything yet. Something dark happened here. We must follow the blood. Animal carcasses. We'll go back and follow another trail. A succulent roast. Let us go back and follow another trail. The 
blood leads off away from the main camp. Perhaps towards those tents? The blood stops here. Where do these card tracks lead? This story is like to have a poor ending. I fear so, cousin. On such a momentous day as well. Flan's coronation may not be as hoped. Up ahead. Looks like they hit a snack. Recognize him? That is Senan, the priest. Bastard stripped him of his clothes. That camp up there. What is it? Anachdu is no camp, though it appears someone <laughs> has made it into one. Let's go. What do you think? The priest was kidnapped. They took his clothes. I believe whoever did this needs to wear them. A disguise? We will soon find out. Search him. Sent to kill Flon. The letter is unsigned. An unknown enemy. Come. We must bring news of this to Kira. I'm with you. You handled yourself well, Abel. I have to say, you really are no stranger to these sorts of encounters. You did not do so bad yourself. Aye, we stopped the death of a king this day. If only we knew who was behind it. No idea who would go to such lengths. You can take your pick of the Northern E Nail Kings, though it is the kings of Ulster who particularly dislike Flon. Different king. Same story.
Any story? The priest is dead, and so too are his killers, bandits. I found this. It's an order to kill Flan. One of them was to disguise himself as a priest. Cut Flan's throat during the coronation. Right under our noses. Why take the risk? Why not poison? Or striking at him in his sleep? Poison didn't fail. And to kill him in his sleep lacks spectacle. But your point is sound. The killer would not have made it out alive. He was ready to die. Whoever plotted this is intent on seeing Flan fall. We need to warn him. After the coronation, I will not have this gnawing at him. Flan earned this. He will enjoy it. Meet him afterward at his quarters in Duro. He will make time for you there. Now, if you will take my excuses, I need to tidy up. Come along, Eivor. The water was not that murky, was it? You don't know much about the role of a poetess, do you, Eivor? Enlighten me. I will. Well, what are you waiting for? I asked to be excused. That meant you as well. I see other kings here. News of Flan's inauguration has reached far and wide. Come, we should join them. Is that him, Flan? Yes. What are they doing? Blessing him. Abbot Owen is the highest ranking official among the Christians. His blessing asserts that Flan is ready to fill the boots of his predecessor. It is all done before the Leah fall. A sacred stone that is set to endow the rightful kings with long reigns. Does it work? Depends on what you consider long. Coronations are long. Where is the food? You have not changed. I am here. I may as well enjoy myself. And with that, Flan's enemies multiply. 
This warring of dynasties runs deep. If he's a smart king, he'll be eager for allies. Smart he is, but also impassioned. His plan to subdue the North is not driven by power so much as it is bloodlust. Back there on our ride from Dublin. Kira made it seem there was more to you and Flon. What am I missing? A uh, detail. A large detail. You see, the northern king who crowned me, Ed Findlia, he murdered Flon's father and took his place as high king. Then, as is custom, he married Flon's mother. Safe to say there is no love lost between you. None. To Flan, Ed was a venomous snake, and so too are the ones he favored. Winning his trust will be no simple task. We just thwarted an attempt on his life. That should at least perk his ears up. Let us hope. I will leave immediately for Duro. Meet me there as soon as you can. This land bears deep affliction.
Sacred Life. Relax your shoulders. He has as much to gain from this as we do. Welcome you to Doro. It has been a long time. Thank you for meeting with me, Lord. I trust our gift was well received. Exotic spices, all of which are foreign to me. I am impressed. Only a taste of things to come. Dublin will soon be known as the pillar of Ireland's trade. To a long life and prosperous reign, my king. Such fealty. <laughs> you honor me. You must be Eivor. My gratitude for your selfless actions and what preceded my coronation. Lord. It seems my enemies could not wait for my reign to begin before trying to put an end to it. An old tale between northern and southern Ian Ale, I'm afraid. But it's one whose ending I will be the author of.
Planning a war? A high king should have control over his land. And I shall. If it takes a bloody war, I must be prepared for it. Dublin's trade has plenty to offer and plenty of stout fighters, Eivor included, ready to fight alongside you. I appreciate your desire to strengthen the ties between Meath and Dublin. And as much as I find myself in need of aid, it appears you find yourself undermined by your own people. What do you mean? During the coronation, a monastery was raided and a Christian text was lost. The Book of Kells. Dublin Danes are to blame. Your support would be of great help, let me be clear. But this capriciousness will sooner harm me than help me. If I retrieve the book, set straight the ones who did this. Would you welcome Barath into your court? It would help. These Danes, you know where they are? In a bog in Inch Row, just north of here. Eivor, this is my responsibility. Remain here. I'll see it done. Eivor, one of the few adults around that really listens for a change. Come back any time, my friend. Spark. 
These are the ones who stole the Book of Kells. I should search their stashes for it. on site here. Ah! Uh. 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 
Your souls for Odin! <laughs> Confirms Flan's information. The book should be here somewhere. Be barred.
stuff is going on? Allar helgar kyndir, meir og minni. Gin elu góð, og það gættust. It's, it's you. you. <sighs> Though we told you to leave, Thorstein. Ah, uh, uh, leave Dublin. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> this is not Dublin. You did not understand you were not to be seen again. Oh, come now. How was I to know you would find your way out here? Why are you here? Looking for a book you stole. You raided a monastery recently. Oh, it was several monasteries, actually. These new friends of mine do not tire easily. The book is important to the Christians. I need it back. The Christians? Ha! <laughs> See? You are an Irish lapdog. <laughs> I, I... I do not have it. Are you upset? <laughs> Please do not be upset. Oh, you are upset, uh... I am running out of reasons to let you live. Uh, I know where it is. Boing tombs. Some strange folks offered me this hoard for it. I could not resist. Could you? See? You understand. We are very alike, you and I. I, I could just as well be your brother. I Do not kill me. 
Thorstein, your blood is not worthy of my steel. I could not agree more. Now vanish. I mean it this time. A third encounter you will not walk away from. Oh, I am through with Ireland. My ankles ache for how I must dance around all of these kings. It offers nothing. Except for this. I will just take this. And this. <laughs>
Thorstein said I could find the Book of Kells here. underground cavern. Whoever these people are, they're secretive.
how to get out of this ghastly grotto. should not be seen in this area. Dry, dusty whelps! Who'll drink with me? is a violation of the highest degree. This will be remedied soon enough, Abbot. You have my promise. The book. Have you found it? Its popularity is ever increasing. This is Owen, Abbot of Armagh. The book is for him. I remember from the coronation. I pray you did not have to endure much to reclaim this. A small price to ensure the High King's patronage. What's this? Lord, you are chosen High King by God Almighty. These are pagans. I, I mean no disrespect.
You have no say here. This is between the two kings. I only mean to warn Flan of the possible implications. Nothing more. And I am well aware of them, Abbot. I have spoken past what is right. I will take my leave. Lord, please excuse this clumsy intrusion. No need. I am glad to see the book is back in good hands. He is colorful. I do not blame the abbot for raising alarm. History dictates he has every reason to. What is your report? I have dealt with the leader in the bog. You'll have no more problems coming out of Dublin. Then we shall turn our eyes to the problem at hand. Ulster is using its power to sway Connacht. An allegiance that must be snuffed before it takes flame. For that, we need to gain support from the other kingdoms. Speak with Kira. She will guide you in this. I shall return to Dublin to gather men and resources for the march. I welcome them. When we are strong enough, we will meet at Knock Free and devise a strategy. You were gone some time. What happened? The book was in the hands of a strange cult. They procured it from Thorstein. I was weak to spare him. My own son knew better. Chin up, Barith. We have come into favor with the High King. I will feel better the day Flan's trust in me is not shadowed by doubt. Back to Dublin I go. Talk to Kira. We must gain favor with the other kings, quickly. Show me what lies ahead. <laughs> 